الكبار أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على السلام حي على السلام حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد أيها المسلمون اتقوا الله حق التقوى واستعدوا لما هو وراءكم قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تأمنون My brothers, Allah has created us so that we can worship him and in order for us to fulfill this purpose of our creation he has sent to us guidance he has sent to us messengers so that we can accept the truth, and keep ourselves safe and steadfast. But it is also from the decree of Allah Jalla wa'ala that man is weak, man is forgetful, man is oppressive, and man is ignorant. <coughs> After our mother and our father forgot and they came down, Allah tells us about a very interesting story and the very first disagreement that occurred between two brothers and the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah has told you a very important story of the children of Adam so take this message seriously and leave what is bad within it Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَى إِبْنَيْ Adam." recite to them and remind them of the story of the two children of Adam. إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانٌ فَتُقُبِّلْ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلْ مِنْ الْآخَرِ قَالَ لَا اكْتُلَنَّكْ قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنْ الْمُتَّقِينَ There were two brothers. One was the older brother. The older brother's name was Qabil. And the ulama have explained that he was older, yes, but he was also very proud. He was also very arrogant. He was also very assertive and he wanted things his way. The younger brother, he was softer. He was more patient and he was wise. And a time came when the older brother, whose name was Qabil, and the younger brother's name, who was Habil, wanted to offer a sacrifice. Their father, Adam salam, wasn't present. So he left the children in charge. Qabil gave his sacrifice and Habil gave his sacrifice. And a sign of acceptance is that a, a, a fire came from the sky and it burnt the one which was accepted with Allah and it didn't burn the one that was not. 
Habil's sacrifice was burnt in front of them. Qabil's wasn't. So Qabil started to blame Habil. It's your fault. He became angry. He became jealous. And he even threatened to kill him. Habil reminded his brother that this is not how you should behave. And he was patient. But he was persistent, Qabil. And Habil was also very persistent and in being conscious of Allah and having taqwa in him. He knew that he needs to protect the laws of Allah so that he can remain patient and steadfast. And this is the only reason why Allah has accepted his sacrifice. He knew that he needs to accept the laws of his father, Adam salam, who was their prophet. And by fighting and being disunited, they would leave the laws of their prophet, alayhi salam. Qabil didn't listen. He didn't want to take his advice. He didn't want to be reminded of Iman and following the sunnah of a prophet. He let shaitan, he let his desires, he let his emotions get the better of him. So Qabil killed his own brother, his younger brother, Habil. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تقتل نفس ظلما No person is ever killed out of oppression and injustice innocently إلا كان لابن آدم أول كفل Except that Qabil will get a punishment because he was the first one who started killing. My brothers, the Prophet ﷺ has warned us that this fitna of us being disunited, of us killing one another, of oppressing one another, will continue. And this tradition will not go away. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ prophesied that as every generation goes by, it will get worse. And he is a sadiq al-masduq. He said, alayhi salam, مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَّرَ أَخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا Whoever lives for a very long time and sees generation after generation, he will find a lot of discord, a lot of differing, a lot of oppression, a lot of disunity. So he said, alayhi salam, that the solution is also there. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةُ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيينَ The solution is not that you become oppressive yourself. The solution is not that you innovate and take away something from your religion or you neglect your religion. The solution is to understand your religion and go back to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, his khulafa and his companions. He said, Addu alayha bin nawajiz. Do not compromise it, not even for the riches of the riches. He told us, alayhi salam, this hadith, how we can protect ourselves and how we can protect our ummah. He also told us in this hadith how to stay away from having bad thoughts of ourselves, of our Lord, and of one another. He taught us how to remain united. And the only way, my brothers and sisters, the only way that you can enter Jannah and have peace and tranquility and justice in the land is to accept his sunnah and the sunnah of the Qulafa and those who followed them in piety after them. But the Prophet ﷺ also in another hadith has said that people will not listen and fitna will occur. So Hudayfa ibn Yaman radiallahu an said كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر People used to come to the Prophet ﷺ and they used to ask him, if I do such and such, will I go to Jannah? Teach me how to go to Jannah. Teach me how to get extra rewards. Hudayfa said, I have a different approach. I know after Muhammad ﷺ is going to pass away, the goodness is going to leave. There's going to be discord. There's going to be fitna. So I want to protect myself. So I asked, I asked him and I used to ask him about the bad things. And he said, radiallahu anh, the reason why I used to ask him, مَخَافَ أَنْ يُدْرِكَنِي I used to fear that I would be in a position 
of fitna. I used to be included in a time when there was discord and oppression. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you will be tested in your iman. Yes, you will be tested in yourselves, in your health, in your wealth, in your children. You will be tested in your communities. We will be tested as an ummah. We will be tested with our leaders. We will be tested with our policies. We will be tested in the countries that we live in. Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ has told us, will fight one another. Muslims will become weak. The ummah will deviate. People will become unhappy with Muslim countries. People will become unhappy with Muslim rulers. Journalists and innocent people will be killed and jailed. But, what's the salvation? What is the mindset for those people who are successful? The Prophet ﷺ has told us to stay away from all this discord and go back to his sunnah and the sunnah of those who are pious. Imam Malik rahimahullah said, As sunnah safina, as sunnah safina tun nuh, man rakibaha naja. The sunnah of the Prophet, ﷺ, his teachings, his life, his statements, his mindset, his attitude towards discord is like the Ark of Nuh alayhi salam. If you board the Ark, you will be successful, Imam Malik said. The Sunnah is your saviour, my brothers. The Sunnah is your religion. The Sunnah is your health, is your wealth. The Sunnah is your children, is your families, is your communities. It's the moment that you wake up all the way until the moment that you go to sleep. But Imam Malik said, "Woman, تخلف عنها غريق. If you don't board the Sunnah, if you don't board the Ark of Nuh, and if you think that Mount Judi will save you, then you are deceived. You will drown. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, one of the Imams of the four Madhabs, and one of the Imams of the Salaf, is informing us here that the Ummah have a way and a precedence that they need to follow. And it's not our own intellects that will save you. It's not our own opinions that will save you. It's not dwelling into politics and doubts and misconceptions and following desires. None of this is found on the Ark of Nuh. What is found is that if you board the Ark of Nuh with the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, with the correct understanding of Islam, you will be saved. My brothers, the Prophet ﷺ has told us that even when fitna will occur, we shouldn't get involved. And this is why Hudayfa ibn Yaman used to ask that question so he can protect himself. Differences will happen. People will become passionate. People will eventually start lacking iman. And the Prophet ﷺ is indicating to us here that when people lack iman and discord occurs, people's true colors will become apparent. So he told Hudayfa radiallahu an, فَأْتَزِلَ تِلْكُ الْفِرْقَ كُلَّهَا Remain away from all of those discords, remain away from all of those different opinions, remain away from any kind of disunity and differing from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَلَوْ أَنَّ تَعَدَّ عَلَىٰ أَصْلِ الشَّجَرَةِ Even if you have to take your provisions from something which is very minimal. My brothers, we are living in a time where this Ummah is going through a lot of discord and a lot of fitna. But the answer and the cure in ourselves individually, in our homes, in our communities, <coughs> is very simple. But it's only made simple for those people who Allah gives guidance to. And nobody will truly understand it and implement it if Allah wants for that person khayr. We have a whole surah which teaches us on how to deal with fitna. A surah which tells us that if you do certain things in your life, you will be successful. A surah which tells us that certain things have priority over other things. A surah which tells us to weigh up the good with the bad and give precedence to which has a greater impact. A surah which tells us not to be gullible and to listen to everything that we hear and to believe it. And if you do that, it will only create fitna and disunity and discord. It's a surah that gives us the ingredients for success. 
And these ingredients are simply just four. Have ilm and have iman. The more iman and the more ilm you have, the more shaitan will be away from you and your families. Worship and do good deeds. Because worshipping Allah in the times of fitna is like making hijrah from Makkah to Medina, as the Prophet ﷺ said. You will be amongst the best of the people within the whole community while they are dwelling in their fitna, while they are dwelling in their desires. You are at home, safe, and worshipping Allah, multiplying in your reward as if you made hijrah from Makkah to Medina. It's a surah, my brothers and sisters, which tells us to be united. It tells us to be patient. It tells us to reflect on our own mistakes and the mistakes of others to deal with them with gentleness, with sincerity and good manners. It is a surah which tells us to be genuine to one another and that we all cooperate in seeking the truth. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa aminu al-salihat wa tawasur bil-haqqi wa tawasur bil-sabr بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبد الله ورسوله ما بعد ما برذز إمام الشاطبي one of the famous scholars of أهل السنة رحمة الله عليه said something which is very important and it should resonate with every single one of us he said that if people have their own interpretation of Islam and they leave the سنة and Islam becomes something which I believe but it can differ to what somebody else believes if we start differing on what La ilaha illallah means and Muhammad Rasulullah means and following his sunnah and having tawheed and iman, the ummah will disunite. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu stajeebu lillahi wa rasool Ida da'akum lima yuhyikum Respond to Allah and his messenger because this is a call which will give you life. If you don't respond, the opposite is also true. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said that the sunnah has so many different words in the Qur'an which are synonyms. Same meaning but a different word. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said one of those words or two of those words that refer to the sunnah in the Qur'an is huda and ruh and nur. Ruh and nur when it is referred to in the Quran, it's talking about the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and in following it. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, if you follow the Sunnah correctly, with its correct understanding, with its correct objectives and meeting them properly, your life will be filled with nur, light, and your life will be filled with ruh, which is soul and substance. My brothers, the Prophet وسلم, in fact, in a hadith, told us that if we remain patient upon the correct understanding of this religion, that you will be successful. And in actual fact, he talked about the people living in the West. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ, look at the favor of the people living in the West. The Prophet ﷺ talked about all of us in one single hadith. He said, لا يزال أهل الغرب The people in the West, Zahirin al-Haq will continue being steadfast upon the correct way and making the truth apparent hatta taqumusa until the hour is established. The Prophet ﷺ said, Muslims in the West will remain there and they will make the religion steadfast and upright until the last day. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said that anybody who lives west of Medina is applied in this hadith. The others from the Salaf, rahimahullah, said anyone who lives in the West has been given a great virtue in this hadith. But look at what they've said, and pay attention to this my brothers. They've said that this hadith only applies to you. This virtue of the Prophet ﷺ talking about you. 
can only apply, and this glad tidings can only apply if you make following the sunnah in its correct understanding your primary objective. My brothers, following the sunnah creates unity and it saves lives and it gives people the correct understanding. In fact, this call happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, whilst the Prophet ﷺ was amongst them. In fact, people were given authority and they used it in a wrong way and the Prophet ﷺ dealt with it in the right way. There was one incident where the Prophet ﷺ sent out an expedition and he made one of them the Amir, the one in charge. And he told the people before they left, listen to him, he is your authority. So they left. And after they reached a certain distance, the person in authority said, let's make a fire so we can have some heat. Let's make a fire so we can warm our food. When they made a fire, <coughs> he said to them, didn't the Prophet wasallam appoint me as your ruler? They said, yes. Didn't the Prophet wasallam command you to listen to me and obey me? And they said, yes. He said, I want every single one of you to enter the fire. They stopped, they paused, they said, yes, the Prophet ﷺ told us to go into the fire. Shall we do it? Confusion, discord, fitna. One person is saying, listen to the Prophet ﷺ and go into the fire. Another person is saying, you can't go into the fire because the Prophet ﷺ would not approve of that. So they stopped and they said to one another, let's go back to Medina and let's confirm with the Prophet ﷺ our situation. So they went back. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and look at this my brothers, this person, he used authority to create fitna between Muslims. This person tried to put his own understanding of the sunnah and enforce it on other people. He didn't go back to the people of knowledge. He didn't go back to the sunnah itself. He had his own understanding and he wanted to apply innovation. Look at this my brothers. People will even use the religion to kill other people innocently. And not only that, in this hadith, they were the best of people. They were the companions. They were the ones that the Prophet ﷺ handpicked to go on this expedition. There were no one better than them. They were the ones chosen. Despite that, he wanted to use religion to kill these people. So when they went back, the Prophet ﷺ was informed. And he said to them, if you had listened to him, and if you had entered the fire... You would remain in that fire until Yawm al Qiyamah. He said, Alayhi salam, Innam al Ta'ah bil Ma'roof. Obeying and listening is only with what is obedient and piety. What we learn from this, my brothers, and what we learn from this khutbah in general is that we need to equip ourselves with knowledge, righteous actions. We have to make our statements and opinions conform with the Sunnah. And if we don't know, then we need to protect ourselves, we need to protect our homes and our families and this will have a greater impact on the Ummah if we rectify ourselves and if we don't know, we should abstain. We should abstain from falling into fitna and it is only this way that we can be rectified if we purify ourselves internally first. The Ummah will not be purified by individuals who themselves are not pure. If we are true to the Sunnah and loving it, my brothers, we need to understand it and follow it correctly. Hada sallu wa sallimu ala rasulikum. Qala ta'ala, inna allaha wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma aizal islam wa al muslimin. Wa adhil al shirk wa al mushrikin. Wa dammir adat din. Allahumma aati nufusana taqwaha. وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذاب النار إباد الله اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون